last time that the Steel Timber Sports World Championship took place in Stuttgart is almost a decade ago, 2016. But the earth still trembles from the sounds of shattered wood. It was definitely one to remember. It's gonna be hard to fit into those giant footsteps. But trust me, just this once. We're about to take it to the next level. You do know what a home advantage is, right? So, Stuttgart is the home of steel. And the Porsche Arena will not rest until everyone, and I mean everyone, will be at the edge of their seats. So if I haven't been more than Crystal, you shouldn't miss this. What did Jason mean to you? Um, it meant a lot, I guess. Like he was, when I first started wood chopping, um, he was he was one of the guys that you always looked up to, and he was that was when he was you know at his best. I'm grateful and humbled to be here again, and just like every other competitor in the in the sing individual world championship, I'm going to do everything I can to be the best in the competition. I guess it's always in the back of your mind, thinking about him and what he's done before you. Um, but like I've sort of said before, you can't think about it too much while you're competing because it'll yeah, take your mind off the prize. 100% I want to win. Um, people are saying, oh, you know, haven't you had enough of it? You, isn't it time to hang it up? There's been a lot of questions coming into this championship whether it would be my last. Do you want to win for him? Yeah, for sure. Along with everyone else back home that's helped and sort of supported me too, yeah. We all love the sport. Um, we all love competing with the axe and the saw and the chainsaw. And the steel timber sports competition allows us to compete at that high, highest of levels. And that is really what the reward is for all of us. Um, yeah, with him gone now, it's uh, yeah, pretty crazy to think, really, yeah. It's the Steel Timber Sports Individual Competition. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines, the underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block chop. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. In round one, a difference of one point applies in each discipline, thus the fastest athlete received 12 points and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In this second round, the remaining athletes compete in the single buck and the springboard for increased scores. 
With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible in the hot saw, as an increased score interval of three points applies in this final round. The fastest athlete can score up to 18 points at the hot saw, the slowest only three points. The athlete who manages to achieve the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. And here we come to the start list for the first discipline, the underhand chop. Czech Martin Roussel and Frenchman Pierre Puyer Barre compete in the first heat. Danny Martin, German champion and local hero, shares the stage with the strapping Mika Davitsky from Poland. Heat number five features two of the Jim Head from Australia and America's Jason Lenz. Emil Hansen from Sweden and Jack Jordan from New Zealand will finish off the proceedings. So we're jumping in with heat number two, Kern Martins versus Red McNoll. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Red McNoll has been working very hard this season and has made a major step in the right direction going up against Kuhn Martins here on the underhand chop. Kuhn Martins has been around forever. Kuhn Martins over to the other side of his block, about four or five drivers ahead of Red McNoll here. And he is looking good as he picks up the pace on that second side. Oh, and he's through in a time of 19.60. It's an unofficial time, of course. Red McNoll still working on his second side, and he should be there in a couple more drivers. He's been looking really good this season, and this second side for him has just been a little bit of a sticky battle as he is finally through in a time of 35.96. Uh, nou, het ging niet zo goed en ik had een verschrikkelijke dag en het uh, bal allemaal niet. En, maar ik heb een heel goed seizoen gehad, dus uh, ik ben wel tevreden over het seizoen volgend jaar beter. All right, next heat we got coming up is Danny Martin from Germany going up against Poland's Mika Dubitski. Should be an interesting battle here as the tail of the tape actually has the huge advantage going to Dubitsky. Three, two, one, go! Very nice start by Danny Martin as he preset that as he got up way high for those first drivers. Mika Dubitsky, he's quick to the other side though. Danny Martin still on his first side and about four strokes back on the second side now. Mika Dubitsky with the advantage, but look at the pace that Dubitsky's hitting at. And that is a fantastic time, 15-9-4 for Dubitsky. And Danny Martin gets through in the 20.81. So right here we see some beautiful cuts from Danny Martin. Those are about as clean on the sides as it gets. Just fantastic accuracy. And he switches over to the other side, very nice. And for Miguel Dubitsky as well, very clean. And that is a dangerous thing when he is that clean. He is also very fast. So both cuts are good. We've got official times locked and loaded and we get ready for our next heat between Jim Head from Australia and Jason Lenz from the USA. Timber. Three, two, one, go. Should be a good battle between these two guys. Jason Lenz very, very tall. So he's got a lot of speed that that ax head reaches as it gets down to the block. He switches over to the other side. Uh, looks like about three strokes ahead of Jim Head. Jim Head, though, quick on that second side, usually as he's got a wider, open, more open face, and Jason Lenz has got a little bit more of a closed face. Let's see who gets through there first. It's going to be Jason Lenz and unofficially 21.98, and Jim Head in 26.39. Not a bad heat right there, some decent times. We 
see here both of these guys driving in pretty much in sync on that first side. Hay started to pick up for Jason Linz towards the end of the heat on the second side. And he was nice and clean through that block. Jim Head wasn't too far behind him. About four strokes is the difference there. And that's how it went onto the other side of the block. Okay, now moving on to heat number six here between Emil Hansen and Jack Jordan. Timber. Three, two, one, go! Jack Jordan, your trophy champion from this year and also a very good underhand chop. Emil Hansen looking good as well. Jack Jordan already over to the second side of his block. A bit of a sticky one there, but a quick transition to the second side for Emil Hansen, and he gets going on that second side. But Jack Jordan well in the lead on this one, and he should have a good time. All right, that's a personal best for the young New Zealander with a 20.32 unofficially. Oh, and look at the knot in that block right there for Emil Hansen. That will cause it to slow down a bit in a time of 40.63. Good battle between these two. That's a tough one when you get a knot in the block on that second side, especially because it really, really, it just can damage the axe head and it can slow things down considerably. And uh, that's what we saw there from Emil Hansen. Okay. These are the results after the first discipline. Underhand chop, Mika Dubitsky from Poland set the benchmark in the competition with a top time of 15.69. New Zealand's Jack Jordan is in third place ahead of Danny Martin from Germany. The two favorites, Jason Lenz and Jim Head, are certainly a little way behind expectations in sixth and seventh place. Emil Hansen, with some bad luck in the wood, is in last place at the moment. Alleine da zu stehen und Deutschland zu vertreten, das ist natürlich auch ein großer Druck. Ich bin, denke ich, sehr groß respektiert im Sechskampf. Die Jungs haben gesehen, was ich kann letztes Jahr auf der WM und äh, ich werde daran arbeiten, dass es genauso wird. Das sind äh, ja, die zwölf Besten der Welt und da muss man natürlich auch jede Runde erstmal überstehen. Natürlich kommt die Nervosität vor dem Wettkampf. Na gut, für mich bedeutet hier Deutschland zu vertreten riesig. Das war mein Ziel gewesen. Jetzt bin ich hier. Jetzt habe ich alles dafür getan. Dann wird es eine heiße Nummer. Ich denke, wenn ich das abrufen kann, was ich kann, ohne irgendwie was übers Knie zu brechen, dann äh, haben die großen Jungs Druck. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Okay, here's the start list for the second discipline stock saw. Canadian Ben Cumberland will be going up against Australian Jim Head in that first heat. In the fourth heat, the current leading Dubitsky goes up against Jason Lenz, who is also a favorite. Then it's Danny Martin, a specialist in the motor saws in the last heat with Emil Hansen, who urgently needs some points. All right, Ben Cumberland up against Jamie Head in this heat number one. Here we go. Timber. Three, two, one, go! Very nice start by Ben Cumberland there. Jamie Head, Jim Head, excuse me. He's got a good clean cut. His cookie dropped. His transition was absolutely flawless. The upcut looking very good. And Jim Head gets a great time and a personal best here with 11 2 8 unofficially. And Ben Cumberland with a 13 9 2. Looks a bit worried about that cut line though. Did he cut it or does it? Oh, we have a flag on the play. So the judges will check this very closely to see if Ben Cumberland did in fact cut the line. So unfortunately a DQ for Ben Cumberland for a cut line. And it actually was an interesting heat. Uh, ben Cumberland was faster on the block, but by virtue of a beautiful transition, Jim Head got this one just a little bit quicker. Uh, well, today definitely wasn't the best day that I've ever had. And I know that 
Um, the people that matter most in my life are proud of me. Next heat, Stocksaw, Jack Jordan from New Zealand going up against Francis Pierre Puybarré. You'll also notice that Jack Jordan doesn't have a personal best time because this is his first go at an individual world championship. But look at that start by Jordan. Very, very nice. He's got a bit of a fat cookie there. You can see Pierre Puybarré has got a thin one. Thin to win is the rule of thumb. Nice clean up cut there by Pierre Puybarré. And he's got this one down in 11.48. But a personal best there for Jack Jordan with a 12.47. Yeah, you can see that big fat starting cookie that doesn't leave you a lot of room on the backside if you make a bit of a mistake like what we saw with Ben Cumberland on the transition to the upcut. Pierre Puybarré though, an experienced Sawyer here. That was a beautiful transition and a nice clean cut. E number three, Martin Roussel from the Czech Republic going up against Ready. Cyril Pops. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Zero Pops, the winner of the Swiss National Championship. In it to win it here today. That's a nice clean cut for him. Martin Roussel looking good on the up cut here. It's going to be Cyril Pops so leaning into that one beautifully. Time at 11.13 for Cyril and 12.28 unofficially for Martin Roussel. A little bit of a wiggly start by Roussel there, but he's got a nice thin cookie. As I mentioned, you want to have that, not that much material Binding on the saw, beautiful transition from both of these guys. Actually, it could have been anybody's game, but Pops was just a little bit cleaner on the upcut. So heat number four, Mika Dubitsky currently in the lead in the overall, going up against Jason Lenz. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Good start by Jason Lenz. He's got a thin cookie. Mika Dubitsky a little bit thicker. Lenz with a beautiful transition. Dubitsky with a good transition as well. Looks like Lenz is going to get this one just by a hair. 11.56 to 12.18 is the difference between these two. That was a nice heat. Oh, najbardziej się cieszę z Anderhenda. Bardzo dobry wynik. Gdzieś tam w Stoksole tam zabrakło troszkę szczęścia. Moving on to heat number five, and we are motoring through the heats, pun Stand intended. Red McKnoll going up against Kern Martin. Three, two, one, go! Look at the difference in the stance between these two gentlemen. Kern Martin's a little bit more upright. Red McKnoll stepping in to get ready for that upcut. Transition is good for both of them. Red McKnoll looking good, but it's going to be Kern Martin's on this one. The very nice time of 11 5 4. Red McKnoll with a 12 3 8 unofficially. I love how Kuhn Martin celebrates each and every time he finishes a uh, run that he thinks is nice and clean. Very good. Next up, Emil Hansen going up against Danny Martin. Danny Martin is a very, very good motor saw operator, so he knows these machines inside and out. And of course, he's got the home fans on his side. Here we go. Timber. Three, two, one, go. Danny Martin with a personal best time of 8.63. Both of them starting off with a nice, clean, thin cookie. Let's see this transition. Oh my goodness, this could be a close heat between these two, but it's going to be Danny Martin with an 11.41, and the crowd erupts. He liked that one. They like that one, and everybody likes that one. Good cut by Danny Martin. Emil Hansen really needed this one to be good and clean. He's got a solid time keeping up with a very fast Danny Martin. He knew he had a good cutter on the other side of that block and on stage, so he pushed himself to get a good time, and that's going to help him along the way. Focus are good. And here we have a look at the results from Stocksaw, and you can see from the times how tight the competition is among the world elite. Just one and a half seconds separate the first zero pops from the 11th Red McNoll. Ben Cumberland is in last place due to a disqualification because the Canadian cut over the line. So we'll see how this affects the overall ranking and a bit of a surprise, Belgian Kern Martins comes in first place. Close on his heels and carried by the audience, Danny Martin, Mikael Dubitsky in third place. And this would currently put three Europeans on the podium. Favorites from Australia, the US and New Zealand follow in places four, five and seven. 
So let's move on to the last discipline of the first round, the standing block chop. Danny Martin in heat number two against Belgian Kuhn Martins, currently in the lead. Emil Hansen from Sweden goes up against the pole. Mika Dubitsky, Jim Head, and Jason Lenz meet in the last heat. All right, let's get it on. Danny Martin versus Kuhn Martins. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Now we know Danny Martin has been working hard on this discipline because it's been one of his weaker disciplines and it's become one of his stronger disciplines. Kuhn Martin is always stable and solid in this one and you can see Kuhn Martin gets over to the other side of his block about three, four drivers ahead of Danny Martin. The overhead view is just fantastic. You see that whole stage and Kuhn Martin's at the moment in the lead on this one but Danny Martin with a strong come from behind and a 20.97 personal best. What a reaction from him and from the crowd. And Kern Martins has got a bit of a sticky wicket there. He still celebrates that one as a, uh, what happened there? It is what it is. See the intensity on Danny Martin as he really left it all on stage here. Da kommen noch drei Disziplinen. Aber bis jetzt, ein paar ganz kleine Fehler, aber sonst bin ich sehr zufrieden. Okay, next heat, Red McNoll going up against Jack Jordan. Red McNoll, the winner of the European Trophy and the winner of the World Trophy, Jack Jordan. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Right into it right away. Jack Jordan is a very, very powerful hitter here. Red McNoll, like I said, has been good this year, but he had a little piece of wood in the way there that chipped out and was kind of hanging. That can cause problems on those drivers. Jack Jordan on the second side of his block, about three drivers ahead of Red McNoll in this one. Oh, and that's a good cut for Jack Jordan. 18.10 is his personal best time. And Red McNoll, one slip through and a second driver to finish it off in 22.51. the power of this young man here coming out of the rookie ranks just last season and joining the pros and uh, he has made an impact absolutely not only in the sport but also on that block okay Emil Hansen going up against Mikael Dubitsky Emil needs a good cut here in order to keep those points flowing after a really really rough start to the competition and right away these two guys are into it Emil Hansen is a very good standing block cutter though he is super strong and he often anchors the team in this discipline. And he was first over to the second side. Mika Dubitsky, who's been suffering a little bit with problems in his forearms, is looking on form today here. And let's see who's got it. Is it going to be Dubitsky or is it going to be Hansen? It's going to be Dubitsky with a 29-3. But Hansen not that far. One driver back with a 22-1-3. You can see two men of completely different statures, but very evenly matched up here as they both hammer away at those blocks. Fantastic heat between these two. Okay, both guys are good. Okay, final heat in standing block. It's Jim Head versus Jason Lentz. To your timber. Three, two, one. Go. Again, two different statures, but skill level and power are there for both of these guys. Jim Head, the pace that he's got is just incredible. He's moving over to the other side, just a half driver behind Jason Lenz, who's on his second side already. Could be a good battle between these two. Oh my goodness, Jason Lenz with a 15-5-1 chop there. And Jim Head got it at 20.06. Of course, times are unofficial. I forget, folks, that these guys are not battling in elimination here. They're battling about the times, and both of these guys looking real good. Nice, clean cuts for both Jim Head and Jason Lenz. This final couple of drivers for the big man, Jason, were just impressive. Okay, first cut. All right. So in the discipline ranking for standing block, the three favorites from the USA, New Zealand, and Australia have taken first to third place respectively. Danny Martin in fifth with a personal best time. And here's what it looks like in the overall rankings after the first round. Jason Lenz from the USA, Danny Martin in second, and Jim Head in third, all with 27 points. Surprisingly, Ben Cumberland and Pierre Puy-Barré eliminated along with Martin Roussel and Red McNoll. So we'll see our top eight guys going to the next round. <laughs> I think the biggest competitor will be Jack Jordan. Uh, probably the biggest competitor I think will be 
Jack Jordan from New Zealand. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, I guess, but uh, the nerves usually help me uh, go a bit harder and go a bit faster, so yeah. The guy that will win will be the guy that won't make any mistakes. The want to win uh, definitely motivates me to keep going. It does get tough, but yeah, you just you just want to you got to push on and keep trying to be better and strive to be the best. Yeah. You got to back yourselves. You got to believe in yourselves. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. I guess. Yeah. You know, I think he's going to be very hard to beat. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. So here's our start list for the remaining eight athletes. For single buck, Danny Martin will be meeting the overall leader, Jason Lenz from the US in the last heat there. Cyril Paps going up against Emil Hansen in the first one. Let's get it on. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. Emil Hansen's dad, Hans Ova Hansen, is a legend in single buck and he is very, very strong and has brought his son up to know exactly what to do in this discipline. Cyril Paps is also excellent here. And look at that, personal best from 11.80 for Emil Hansen, Cyril Paps with a 15.41. See here, using the entire length of that two meter long cross cut saw, super efficient cut, very nice time, and a personal best, very well done. Stand to your timber. Here we go with Three, Jim Head and two, Mikhail Dubitsky. One, go. Anybody's guess on this one? Both of these guys, really solid single Sawyers. You can see Jim Head using the entire length of that saw. He's got quick pace. Mika Dubitsky doing a lot of the same things there. Oh, a huge hookup and a pinch out by Mika Dubitsky. That means he's got to cut that tab off and that killed his time. 16.04, oh, that was disappointment for him, but a personal best for Jim Head with an amazing time of 11.73. No i single pack tam odpad prążek, także no ale, ale ogólnie zadowolony. There you see the official times locked and loaded as we move to our next heat, heat number four, Danny Martin against Jason Lentz. Another discipline where Danny Martin's been working quite hard to improve on. Jason Lentz is always very solid. He's such a tall man, so he can really utilize that power and the full length of that saw. And both these guys are really nicely evenly battled out. Wow, that was close. A personal best for both of them. Fantastic. Danny Martin, what a great job by him. And Jason Lenz right there, two times that are about as even as it gets. 12-11 personal best for Danny Martin. 12-08 for Jason Lenz, who is just a hair faster. Fantastic. So single buck results and the sheer level of performance these athletes have shown is on point. Unbelievable. Almost everyone's achieved a personal best and the strongest competitors were Jamie Head and Emil Hansen with the times below 12 seconds. And that means the overall rankings. Jim Head from Australia takes the lead ahead of Jason Lenz from the USA. Moving on to springboard now and the last discipline in round two. I think the biggest surprise could probably come from Emil Hansen. I think that his game has come a long way in just in a very, very short time. They've got an awesome program in Sweden. So I would uh, probably put my, my dark horse bet on, on Emil. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. Let's see if Ben Cumberland made the right call here on Emil Hansen. So important for this discipline is to get that pocket set as quickly as possible. Up on the first board, Cyril Pops looking good. Emil Hansen, whoa, that was a four hit pocket for Emil, I think. He was up on that second board very quickly. So we could have some prophetic words from Ben Cumberland as Emil Hansen starting to work on that top block. 
Cyril pops up there now with him. It's going to be about who gets through here as quick as possible. Both boards are looking good. We've got some nice angle on them. On the second side of the board, Emil Hansen cutting through nicely. Oh, a bit of a, a wiggly one there. He's got to make sure he doesn't twist that axe and get called for wrenching. Cyril Paps almost through on his. Emil Hansen under a minute's time, and Cyril Paps just over a minute. Pretty good, but we do have a yellow flag. So could it be under review for wrenching? Let's see. Emil Hansen's heat is being rechecked and they're suspecting wrenching, as I mentioned. So in other words, right there, that block coming off by twisting the ax. Let's see what the judge says. Okay. We need a video check for potential wrenching. On oh, it's However, both cuts are good. All right, so we got lucky there. Both cuts are good. No wrenching fine at all, that means you will have a very good time locked and loaded. Here we go with Boone Martins and Jack Jordan. Boone Martins, a very experienced man in this discipline. Jack Jordan looking very good, though. Boone gets that first board in quickly. Jack Jordan right there, about a half stride behind him on this one. Boone getting that second pocket set. Check the angle out on Jack Jordan's board there. Ooh, it sags significantly. He may have trouble with this one if it starts to slip out. Kuhn Martins was a little bit slower getting that second board in place, but he's got a good board, and that means a stable platform to work on that top block, and that means he's got a distinct advantage over Jack Jordan here, who's got to recut that first, or excuse me, that second pocket and reposition the board. You want to make sure that metal tooth bites in and gives you a stable position. Kuhn Martins on the second side. One more driver, do it. Almost goes down. <laughs> Has a little bit of fun with the audience, and he is under a minute at the moment in springboard there. Good job. Jack Jordan takes a personal best 122.67, being a first-time competitor in the individual worlds. Pretty disappointing, really, to finish. Uh, yeah, yeah, to finish like that. Um, put a lot of sort of, a lot of training into that springboard event, and um, you know, to stuff it up like that uh, hurts quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. Both cuts are good. Uh, Kuhn Martin's always smiling, always happy. Love that guy. Okay, Mika Dubitsky going up against Jim Head in springboard here. Oh, Dubitsky angry at that block. Jim Head gets that board in quickly. I think that was about maybe six hits pocket. I didn't get a chance to count. Look at that. Big man springs up there like he's a bunny rabbit. Jim Head setting his second board. Seems pretty confident with that one. Gets up right away, and he can start working on that top block. He's got a nice angle on that board as well, so he can really put... Pedal to the metal and uh, get a lot of power into that top block with his axe. Mika Dubitsky up there now. now Dubitsky's working with a lot of power in his arms. He's a huge man. So if he can really do some work on that top block, he might catch up with Jim Head, but not likely in this case. Jim Head drops it in 52-14. Dubitsky getting deep on that first side now, switching to the second side. And uh, he's going to be well over a minute here. And Jim Head with a great time of 52-14 unofficially. And Dubitsky drops it in 107.33. It's obvious that Jim Head has been working hard on this discipline. Mika Dubitsky as well, but that second board just took him a little bit too long to get in place. And I think by the time he got up there, he was a little bit tired because those drivers were going in pretty flat. And here, the final one from Jim Head. Nicely done. All right, now it's about to get really noisy in the hall because the next heat is between Danny Martin and Jason Lenz. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! A little bit of a skip there for Danny Martin on that one cut. Doesn't seem to have affected him too much. Jason Lenz has already got his first board in place. And that was six hit pocket there for Danny Martin as he gets up. Jason Lenz working on setting that second pocket and board in place now. Is it going to be enough to hold the big man? Seems like it's good. He's got good angle on his board. Ooh, that's a very deep and dirty pocket for Danny Martin on the second one. It's taken him a long time to get in there. Jason Lenz is already working on that top block. So a bit of a disadvantage for Danny Martin. That axe is really stuck in there. He's got to fight to get it out. And that causes more time to be run out on the clock. And Jason Lenz will switch to that second side fairly quickly here. Stance position as well. And he gets it done in 52-4-2. Good time for Jason Lenz. Danny Martin on the second side of his block just over a minute now as he's closing in on a minute and 10, but does it in a minute seven, eight, six. Good job by Danny Martin. The 
can see here, Danny was working on getting that first pocket cleaned up as Jason Lenz also struggling to get his ax out of that block to get his second pocket set. And that's pleased the disappointment right there on Danny Martin's face, who has done this discipline in under a minute before. So springboard results, Emil Hansen with the fastest time of the day ahead of Jim Head and Jason Lenz. Danny Martin has to settle for seventh place in this one. And if we take a look at the overall standings, Jim Head from Australia is now leading Jason Lenz from the USA and the young Swede Emil Hansen. Danny Martin is in fourth place and now has a real chance of winning a medal. Jack Jordan, one of the favorites, surprisingly eliminated. And the competition is also over for Cyril Pops as we head towards Hot Sauce. These custom handmade race tune machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single cylinder two stroke engine, often taken from a snowmobile or high powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. Here's our start list for hot saw. Each athlete will take the stage alone in the world championship format. This is Danny Martin's specialty event. Can he catch up with the competition? We'll find out. So let's come to the make or break discipline and the supreme discipline of the steel timber sports, hot saw. Many love it, many hate it. These machines have been responsible for thwarting world championship hopes on the last stretch, but also for winning the top title. The athletes have to give these beasts their full focus. Mika Dubitsky Athlete needs to cut three ready. clean cookies here. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A little bit of a bobble in the middle there. And it looks like he's got three on the deck. And that is a clean cut as far as I'm concerned. Everything's unofficial for the moment, but he's got a great time of 6.40. That's a personal best for the pole. Well done, Mika Dubitsky. Kern Martins. Eddie, Look at that beast Eddie. on the ground there. Unbelievable saw. Timber. Three, two, one, go. Good start, a little bit of a wobbly run into that first cookie. Some shaking and baking at the top of the second cookie, and he's got a little bit of a wacky angle on that third one. Is it a clean cut, or did he go over the line? He seems pretty pleased with it. Kern Martin's playing with the audience here in Stuttgart. Fantastic competitor. As I said, always smiling, one of the best out there. You can see it just gets a little bit out of control there. On the second cut, he's clean to the top. Bit of a delay there, and that third cookie it looked pretty good. Bit of an angle, but everything seemed fair. Okay, your cut is good. <laughs> Fantastic, Kern Martin's a 7-2-4 official time. A great cut for him, and now it's getting really noisy. As you can see, the Danny Martin fan club as he steps out onto the stage for his hot saw cut. One of his favorite disciplines and one where he's very strong. Oh, beautiful start. A little bit of a wacky middle, and that was a clean final cut. Five, eight, six, three on the deck. That's a great cut for Danny Martin, and he is pleased. That was a great first cut. A little bit of a wobble on this second cut. Bit of a thick cookie, so he had to be real accurate on this third one, but he was bang on point. Beautiful third cookie. Good time for Danny Martin in a discipline where he is very solid. Okay. Your cut is good. 5-6-6, six, six, fastest time so far in hot saw and the lead in the overall. Oh, I was very fast gewesen and uh, yeah, eigentlich wenig aufgeregt. The zweite hot saw kam zum Zug. Uh, yeah. Aber ich bin ruhig geblieben und habe äh, mein Ding gemacht und habe meine Leistung abgerufen. Okay, Emil Hansen up next. Ready. Go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, 
one, go! Start. That starts clean. Second cookie on the deck. He's got three on the deck. He's got to be careful not to come back up and tag that block with the saw. Looks like he's okay, though. Ooh, there's a very thin piece at the bottom there as they check that line. I think he should be okay. Johansson starts off nicely. Got that saw in real deep. These things are heavy, powerful machines, so this control is absolutely essential. Oh, there, the fin was on the top. Fantastic. All right. And your paddy. Go! 577. Nicely done by Amy Hansen. Next up, Jason Lenz from the USA. Anthony, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! A shaky start by Jason Lenz. That second cookie's a bit thick, and that third one's rolling away. That's a massive piece of cookie there, and I think he might have cut over the line. Wow, yep, there's a flag. Let's see what the official call is here. But I do believe he has cut over the line on that third cookie. Okay, we have a you cut the line. Oh. That is sheer disappointment for Jason Lenz. Yeah, he was just a little bit too fast on that upcut, swung it over, and he knew it right away as he looked at the heavens. All right, our last competitor coming up on stage. Jim Head was leading, coming into the hot saw. If he can have a clean cut here, he will take the world championship Stand title. Here we go. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. Saw starts, he takes his time on that first cut, but it's a thin cookie. Second one looks good, third one's very thin as well. Does he have the space? Those look like three good cookies on the deck, and the time is good. Let's see what the judges have to say. He seems pleased by it, there's no flag on the play. Let's take a look at this again. Ooh, that was risky as he lifted, he cut into the block. That might have been a problem. Look at that. Second cookie though, super thin, beautiful. Third cookie, a bit of an angle towards that bottom line, but it looked clean. All right, still got it. Good. So he didn't have the fastest time in hot saw, but ladies and gentlemen, it was enough to take the top spot overall. Jim Head is your new Steel Timber Sports individual world champion. Uh, yeah, obviously over the moon, you know, I've been in Timber Sports a long time and, uh, you know, done a lot of hard yards and it was nice just to get here, uh, let alone win the gold medal. It's really hard. It had a really knock in the beginning when you wanted to go home, but then I went up to the end and I was really happy that I was able to do it all together. Ich bin sehr zufrieden im Gesamten, natürlich aufs Treppchen, das ist ein Traum, kann es kaum fassen, vor deutschem Publikum ist ja, unfassbar. The final result, Jim Head is the 2023 Steel Timbersport Individual World Champion here in Stuttgart, coming in ahead of Emil Hansen and Danny Martin. We hope you enjoyed our show today, thanks for joining us, till next time everybody, take care and ciao.